Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is going to be a match between Ice Speed Lori and Cube. This is Shadow Fury 33 presenting this match to you from the tournament on January 11th, 2014. So we saw God versus Klon, and God beat Klon pretty decisively. Now we have Cube versus Lori, which is a much more even match. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. We're going to be starting on Red Comet, which we have seen several times before. That is the first map of round two of the quarterfinals. It's always the first map of the quarterfinals. And Cube is starting out with Cloaky Bots, while Lori is starting out with Light Vehicles. I should increase the volume the music set. That's better. Okay. Lori is starting out with Light Vehicles, which, once again, Bot versus Vehicle on Red Comet. Last time we saw this, Bot did not do well. However, it was Shield Bot, which is much slower than Cloaky Bot is. Cloaky Bot has much more opportunity to speed around the map and to generally have fun tearing stuff apart, but. Shield is much slower, relies a lot more on choke points, relies a lot more on staying bunched up, which is difficult in a map like this where there's so much flanking opportunity. You can go along north, go along south, it's like, there's all these flanking opportunities. It's very difficult to make that work out, whereas with Cloaky Bot, that's not so much the concern. They are they do want to sort of be together just for numbers, but they're often sent around the map, and Ticks are a great force multiplier and a great landmine just to stop anything from really dealing a whole lot of damage meaningfully. And Dart doing what it can, but Unit Lori attack. is not God. And while God, we did see some great Dark Micro from God last game, Lori was clearly not focusing too much on that. He's focusing more on getting his Scorchers up. The Dart was just for scouting. It wasn't so much for harassment. Just to see what Kyubei was up to, that he's up to Cloaky Bots, and very quickly getting himself Warriors, which are a bit harder to make work well. And Kyubei looks like he's just making sure that Lori hasn't expanded to the south, which is not an uncommon way to expand, though admittedly, I find northern players typically expand to the north. Typically... I find the players will expand along the long side of the map rather than the wide side of the map, or the short side of the map, because well, I'm not sure exactly why, actually. I think about that, especially in the south, there's not there's a lot of open, actually in both cases there's a lot of open space here, and the mexes are all the same value. But anyway, glaives are coming in, and they are not especially useful against scorchers. Scorchers actually do operate almost in a riot roll against glaives, just because Glaives need to get fairly close to attack, and Scorchers benefit from being close when attacking. The Warriors, on the other hand, are a bit different, and Lori is getting E-Cell as well. So, standard com opening. Pretty standard opening with the three mexes. He does have, actually, a bit more energy than Cubey has. Cubey is going primarily for his E-Cell only. He's going primarily for metal, and he's not going heavily for energy. And Lori is... Sorry, Cubey is trying to deal with Lori's force here, but... Lori is just able to stop them from getting anywhere near him. The Scorcher's doing a great job. I still kind of question the use of bots, though. Admittedly, Warriors are going to have a slightly easier time. Glaives are not. Glaives are going to have a hard time. Against Darts, they're okay, but against Scorchers, they aren't. But, like I said, Warriors have a much easier time. They will be able to take care of the Scorchers without too much issue. It will be some issue. These, this many Scorchers will win against the Warrior, but the Warrior should take a few kills before it goes down itself. And, actually, the Scorchers are avoiding it completely. Probably not a terrible idea, though. Even trying to avoid it, the Warrior is dealing a huge amount of damage to it. To that group. And Cube expanding over to the north at the same time. So, at this point, Cube is actually getting a much greater metal advantage. But, falling behind it in the rest of his economy. And, there we go. That Warrior gone down, but was able to get rid of three Scorchers beforehand. Very powerful attack there. Cube still sending in more Warriors and Rockos. The Warriors still need to tank this. The Rockos are going to be effective against these laser towers, but they have to be tanked for. Unfortunately, that doesn't help when there are Scorchers coming from behind, able to get rid of you, and Lori once again getting rid of another Warrior. And more Rockos are streaming in. Purely Rockos at this point. Kyubei not rebuilding any of his Warriors, just getting Rockos up. Which, against the Scorchers, is not the best option. Not a bad option for a general assault, but Scorchers will just tear it apart. I mean... Like I said, I'm not sure why he went for Cloaky Bots, honestly. On Red Comet. I mean, Cloaky Bots in general, I understand. I like Cloaky Bots quite a lot. But on Red Comet of all places, I don't understand why he went for that. Just because of their speed. They don't have any speed. They do have options to deal with various forces that light vehicles throw out at you, which is likely what you're going to fight. But it's the speed that's a big thing. That speed means they can't easily get around the map, can't easily harass, they can't easily defend if they need to. You have to be very careful. I mean, Cube is making sure he has some defense turrets up. But even then, you have to be really careful about that. 
And it looks like Cubay is going to just... Well, ultimately going to be able to get rid of those Scorchers. More Scorchers, however, are forthcoming. And that's all that Lori has built up so far. He's not got any Caretakers yet. He's not going for Ravagers or Levelers yet. The Scorchers are doing him just fine at this point. Now, I'm a bit surprised if he doesn't switch over to Ravagers and Levelers at some point. And also the Darts of the South that look like they are trying to attack those Rockos. And they are indeed. The, the Rockos, unfortunately, are fairly powerful against them. The thing is, Rockos is that they aren't bad against vehicles because vehicles can't dodge that effectively. They can't turn in a dime. They have to. They have a turning radius. There's only so much they can do to dodge. So the Rockets can actually do stuff. That being said, they still can maneuver out of the way. They still can avoid the Rockets. It's not impossible to dodge. It's just a bit harder for light vehicles to dodge compared to bots. Bots have an easier time dodging. They can completely... They can just stop on a dime and then turn backwards the other way. And that'll work. And Cubay is starting to get harassed by this. Actually, Scorch can do a lot of damage to the backside of Cubay's base. He's going to be able to tear everything apart. As this line being drawn shows, everything being torn apart here. This Scorcher will have free reign over Cubay's economy. Lori is just tearing everything apart. He has double Cubay's economy at this point. And he is getting enough... Well, not Caretakers, but Masons, at least. Not going for anything beyond Scorchers, though. Just going for pure Scorcher spam. And that is actually not that surprising. If I... Well, okay, he wasn't the one who went for pure Scorcher spam. That one. That was... Actually, that was him. Come to think of it, yeah. Lori did go for the pure Scorcher spam we saw against Zakdoth. I think that was... No. Was that him? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was him. That he won... Yeah, sorry, he won game two by going for that on Red Comet. And he ended up... I have to double check, actually. I'm, I'm starting to lose focus on which one was which. But it doesn't matter right now. Lori losing his commander. Cubay able to at least deal with something. But at the same time, Cubay is getting Gunship Plant. An interesting change. Getting Nats and Blastwing. He's trying to go for a bit more of a cheese strategy here with the last of his money. He did lose a lot. He's rebuilding as best he can. And Lori, at the same time, is just expanding as he's attacking, which is what you should be doing, and he's doing that very nicely. And what the heck? Okay, apparently something weird happened. The glaives are... The glaives have vanished somehow. Whoa. Okay, that was... That is bizarre. I'm not sure why the glaives are... Okay, forget that. Who cares? Point is, L Lori is pushing in. I'm not sure if he was the guy who get, did go for the big strike of all of these things beforehand. I mean, I know he had... I know there was a player that had to go for a massive amount of Scorchers earlier. I think it was Lori against Sackdoth. It might have been the Sponge versus Drone. Regardless, we have seen that Scorchers do a very good job in large groups. But no, it looks like Lori is switching over to Ravager, so he's not completely committed to Scorchers. But still, against Cloakie is not a bad idea. Cloakie does have a lot of fast units. Not as fast as vehicles, but Glaives come pretty close, and Scorchers can do a very nice job of dealing with them. It looks like he's just going for the attack. Trying to finish it off. Blastwings are in position to deal with them, and they will finish... Are they? No, they won't even go for it. In fact, completely avoiding them completely, entirely. Now, Lori is now fully aware of the gunship plant, but it might be a little bit too late. He does have... He does have position to get rid of the gunship plant. He's not actually doing so. Going for the laser instead, which is a bit of a suicide move. And the blast wing, speaking of suicide moves, is going in straight for the factory here. Going in straight for the masons and will blow all of the masons up. Not the factory, though. The factory survives. The masons are all down. So that production has been massively reduced. Massively, massively reduced. But at the same time, the gunship plant is about to go down. So a nice strategy to eliminate a lot of Lori's production capacity. But not the best strategy for ultimately getting through this. However, he could follow up. If Cubay follows up with this, he could do a very nice job. He's taken out a lot of the slash a lot of the scorchers. If he follows up with this, it would be very effective. Unfortunately, the factory has been locked down at the moment. No anti-air here either. I think Cubay is just trying to completely disable Lori's ability to counteract and then Unit use that to finish him off. So at this point, this gnat has locked down this factory. Not taking any damage, but it is not able to produce anything. The Ravagers and Scorchers are the only thing left. If these Glaives go down, there can be more coming up. Although it looks like this one's just sort of happy to remain in the factory. Not sure why. 
and Kyubei not actually expanding from here, surprisingly enough. And it looks like the Glaives are doing with the camp, unfortunately for them, it looks like the Scorchers managed to get rid of that Gnat, and that means the factory's back up and running, and that is going to be likely game. Lori wants to get his production capacity back up, can just start rebuilding everything he lost. And there's no gunship plan, there's no more blast wings coming up. I mean, it was not a bad idea from Kyube, it's just that there really weren't enough blast wings. So, Kyube really not focusing on this at all, he's focusing entirely on the side of his base. He's very, very much tunnel vision, he's not multitasking, which you need to do in 0k. I mean, it's... you don't need to be babysitting every little thing in 0k, but you do need to multitask. You need to jump around the map, you need to figure out that you are building, and you are fighting, and you're microing your fights, and you're making sure that all your construction is going through, and you're continuing to construct as you need to. It's... Is that Kyube still has his commander up, and it's... really going through, and... Anarchid is pointing out that... Okay, Kyube, his commander's alive. He has no need to eat his corpse. He's not dead yet. I mean, we all know that's something that Kyube does, but it's not something that he needs to do right now. In fact, it's something that any good player does, is to reclaim their commander when it's destroyed, because that's a lot of metal there. You really want to do that, but it doesn't matter. Lori did lose his commander. That's the one that needs to be reclaimed. I don't see any masons going around it. I'm not entirely surprised, but I don't see any masons around there. Just to pick it up. Get some extra metal. I mean, Lori is ahead. He's got twice the economy of Kyube, but why not increase that lead further? And just seal the game that much sooner. Because as it stands, levelers would be very useful, but as it stands, Lori could always use a bit of extra production capacity. He could use a bit of metal, extra. He is floating metal right now, but getting a caretaker at the same time, which will mean, ultimately, he is able to push out more and more units, use up that metal, and then send some masons over here to reclaim his comm. He does have the area pretty much taken over. The Glaives are being a bit of a thorn in his side, though. The Raptors have a hard time dealing with it. The Scorchers able to get rid of this solar plant in the north, but the Glaives able to get rid of everything to the east if they're not checked, which they will be by this laser turret. So, actually, never mind. That laser turret will do just fine. But more Glaives are coming out. Kyube is just spamming Glaives and basically not so much pushing to win at this point, Maybe trying to stall... He's not building... He's building up now. He's building more economy, getting a vehicle factory of his own. But... At this point, stalling is all he can really do. He's starting to reclaim the center. There are some defenders to stop him, but... It's not that much. There's... The numbers are growing, but... At this point, all... I, all Lori needs is enough production capacity, which he basically has now. And possibly levelers. But even Scorches would do well in large enough numbers. And especially since the Glaives are not packed together, they can't easily just attack in large groups. They can't easily surround. They are looking to try to surround, though. Kyube is getting some Glaives from the south and Glaives from the north. And he does have a factory. His light vehicle factory is 20 seconds away from being done. And his Glaives are still doing a pretty good job. This Scorchers are getting in a position to deal with that, but no, they are instead going to the south Glaives, start trying to stop those from dealing any real damage and succeeding pretty well, actually. As well as getting rid of the flanks in the north. Even with the flank, the Glaives aren't able to get through that. And it is a bit surprising that Kyube has not built a tick, as I pointed out in the chat right now. That Kyube has not built a tick. Because... That would be very useful. That's exactly what he needs to do. Is get ticks. Because that would just stun everything. Or at least help. Slashers are being built up instead. No clue why. This is a rather late point for slashers. I mean, okay. I mean, I'm taken off because of the fact that the comments and chat are saying stuff, but yeah. Anyway, QBA throwing in the towel. That was a really bizarre game, but that was game one. So game two will be coming shortly. And then after that, possibly game three. So stay tuned for that, and we'll have that, or I'll have that when it happens. Welcome back, 0K fans! This is Shadow Fury CT3 bringing you Game 2 of Cube vs. Lori. This is going to be on Cooper Hill. So we saw Game 1. This is the quarterfinals, by the way. Game 1, Lori won against Cube. Cube won for Cloaky Bots on Red Comet for some reason, and Lori won for Red for the more typical light vehicles. And won. So this is Game 2. Lori wins Game 1. If Lori wins this, he wins the quarterfinals match and goes on to play FX Drone. If he loses, then. We go on to game three and see who wins that. And game has begun. We are on Cooper Hill. 
Lori on the west side of the map, and Kyubei on the east side of the map. Kyubei going for shields, Lori going for cloakies. And... Kyubei is... He was going for he's going for bandits quickly. Neither player going for a lot of constructors for reclaim yet. Instead, going for more solid economy on metal extractors. Cooper Hill is kind of small. I mean, I've seen it done well where people just go and grab all the reclaim, but it is kind of a small map, so it's not entirely surprising. Now, Lori is doing some reclaim to make up for economy deficiencies, but and he has Morpheus Commander as well, so he has his E cell. Now, Cuba, on the other hand, is. He has his E-cell up. He is going to the center of the map, interestingly enough, possibly to build some defenses there. Not Neither player going for Reclaim. Like I said, Cooper Hill is a pretty small map, so going for Reclaim like that is a bit risky. I can kind of see why players wouldn't do it, because it is a bit of a risk. You have to be careful of the fact that you could be attacked pretty quickly. So going for Mass Reclaim is not the best idea, necessarily. Going for some Reclaim is a really good idea, and Lori is doing exactly that. Cube has not gotten around to doing that quite yet. He's actually behind an economy by a Metal Extractor and now a Reclaim. And Lori getting his glaives up as well. I and mean, Kyubei went for his bandits first, I think, or at least went for his bandits fairly early, went for his metal extractors first, and his commander went to the center to build up the defenses, which are holding the center pretty well. But at this point, Lori has an economic advantage. He is pushing an economic advantage. He can continue to reclaim to solidify that advantage. Although Kyubei does have some reclaim going on now. He is getting reclaimed now. He does have the metal up from that, but he doesn't have the energy to support that. That's a bit of a problem. You need both metal and energy to be high. If one of them is lower than the other, that's going to be your bottleneck factor, and you always want energy to be higher. Because excessing energy overdrives metal, and energy is often used for, sh for, used for shields, used for cloak, and I think it's used for a couple other things as well, but basically shields and cloak primarily. So you want to have more energy than metal. Lori and Kyubei both have more metal than energy, mostly due to the fact that they're reclaiming rocks. And not reclaiming a lot of trees, which is not surprising. Metal is a bit harder to come by. It's much more map dependent. And Lori is just setting himself up, getting more metal extractors. No real power plant construction from either player. And fight to the south. Lori and Kyubei are... Actually, Kyubei is a bit ahead here. So the evenly matched if the six glaive comes in, but... Five glaives, sorry, six glaives on five bandits is fairly even match. This tick will turn things around if it gets into position and kills or hits any of the glaives. That'll turn it around and allow Lori to win. But at this point, it's entirely down to micromanagement. How well can the players micro this? And at the same time, Kyubei is setting up more and more in the center, getting radar, getting actually a lot of radar. He, I think he has he has full radar coverage of the map. He knows pretty much everything that's going on. And the tick has hit. Lori coming in to follow up on that tick. Kyubei losing his bandits and. That's going to be huge. I don't really know what Kyubei has planned now. He is still building more bandits. He has more bandits forthcoming, but Lori has more glaives forthcoming, and Lori basically lost no glaives. I think he lost two out of, compared to Kyubei losing six bandits. Admittedly, the tick is worth about two bandits or so, but that was worth it. And more fighting from Lori. He is definitely positioning himself very nicely. He's got a great spot for himself, and Bandit coming in to harass, or maybe? Unit Looks like QB is setting up a Bandit in the shadows just to make sure that it's going to be able to harass if needed. But these Glaives doing a much better harassment job, getting rid of the Bandits that are trying to stop them. Not enough Bandit numbers to actually deal with them. And Lori's not getting a positioning disadvantage to have that be a problem. The Tick not able to actually stop the Bandit, but the Defender is able to do it. So the Tick doesn't die. The Tick's still alive. And Lori tearing apart QB's base. Looks like there is going to be basically this. This is going to be game. I think Lori has it from here. Cubase Commander has no beam lasers, just E-Cell. So, I mean, not E-Cell. He has E-Cell and a P-Shooter. That P-Shooter will be fairly effective, but at this point, Cubase now half economy compared to Lori. And Lori has... He's getting Zeus now. I, uh, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, it's not a terrible idea to push through the center with Zeus, but Warriors might be a more cost-effective option. Admittedly, Lori has enough economy, he can just get a caretaker as he's doing now and push that Zeus faster. But as it stands, he has a lot of glaives and... Well, he has a few glaives, that's kind of all he has at the moment. Nothing else is being built. Unit under attack. So these glaives have got to be really careful. They are all that Lori has for a military right now. Once the Zeus is up, once actually the caretaker is up, actually a couple of rockers as well, missed that. But once the caretaker is up, then these Zeus will come in much faster. I'll come in in about 20 seconds each, but as it stands... Oh, never mind, they're actually good. Lori does have his commander helping that out, so 
He does have more build power going for that, and he has a nice harassment coming with the, with the Glaive. Unfortunately, not under the Convict Shield, but Lori has started paying attention to that. We'll be able to get rid of that. And at the same time, the Northeast fighting some bandits and losing a Glaive for nothing. Unfortunately, that was a bit of a waste. Didn't quite see that in time, but he was able to get rid of the Convict, able to get rid of these Metal Extractors, and that's pushing back Kiwi's economy even further. He hasn't... Actually, Kiwi hasn't really built, rebuilt the main base, surprisingly. Very focused on here, and... Actually, where is Kiwi focused? Goodness sakes, where are my hockeys? Anyway, Kube is very focused on... Right, I had a hockey set to follow camera, but apparently it got reset for some reason. Anyway, Kube is not focused very heavily on this. He has now started to focus on economy, started to focus on metal extractor, but... He's kind of tunnel visioned on here where Lori... Bit more focused on getting some warriors, focused on getting this Zeus into combat. Zeus is into combat. And... Getting his commander up once again. Particle Beam, E-Cell, and another warrior coming in to support the Zeus's with Arako. So going entirely for heavy forces now. Not focusing on the light forces. This center is a very juicy target, though. It's a matter of the defense turrets and well, mostly the laser turrets. The Lotuses are the big threat. The defenders aren't... I mean, they have the range, but they aren't going to deal a whole lot of damage. Not for a while. Not against these units. Not effectively, anyway. The Zeus's are coming in to finish off what is here. Unfortunately, the Zeus's are not great at dealing with single units that effectively. There are a lot of bandits there that's going to be hard to work with. However, the Warriors, once it gets close, there is one Warrior getting close. More Warriors will be forthcoming, but these Zeus's are not actually dealing a whole lot of damage. The Glaive Hover is nicely distracting the laser turret. The Rocco able to come in from behind and help distract that as well. It looks like Lori is... Just keeping the solid. At the same time, he is focusing on the north, so he is making sure he has some good idea of what's going on. And he doesn't have full radar coverage like Kube does. Like I said, Kube has full radar coverage of the map. Lori does not. So Kube is fully aware of what's going on, and not actually building a whole lot, I guess, to respond to that. Getting more bandits and some rogues now, but no thugs, no well. Felon would be just out of the question at this point, but no thugs even. And Kube actually doing a lot of reclaim. He is getting a lot of reclaim. He is pushing that reclaim into his factory, which is good. As is Lori. And Lori actually building a gunship plant, going for a gunship switch. While also making sure he's pushing out this factory. Well, actually, pushing out the factory as quickly as he can. The factory is, well, clearly fairly high priority. However, the bandit coming in the north. The bandits in the north taking care of everything in the north. And that is going to tear everything apart. However... Enough forces to the south from Lori will be able to take out the center. Now, I mean, I can't see why he didn't attack directly. This is an uphill battle. Quite literally, it is an uphill battle. And it's difficult to fight those. Much like in real life, it's hard to get the range on it. Admittedly, it's not too hard. It is possible if you have enough units just to tank the damage. Especially if you have a tick to disable everything. Nice masking there. Use the rest of the units to mask that tick walking up to the laser turret, which would have been killed otherwise. Before getting the laser turret in order to stop everything, and Kyubei losing all of his power infrastructure in the center. And that is basically... Well, that's a lot of his economy down. However, Kyubei is not out of the match quite yet. He does have a Roach coming up. He does have... He can get rid of these units, and he doesn't have a terrible economy. Well, it's going to start going back. Hey, never mind. He's going to start falling behind an economy once the metal is down. Roach gets rid of one of the Zeus's, damages another, and a second Roach is coming in, and that Roach is going to be able to take care of possibly just this Zeus. Hard to say. But it is trying to get rid of these forces in the front. However, now Lori has got his... Well, he has a gunship factory up. He has the brawler up. He has Zeus's not dying. That second roach didn't actually kill a Zeus. I'm not sure if it killed anything, actually. It did not. No, that, that roach is a bit of a waste. Looks like the Zeus managed to intercept it. Good for it. Bad for Kyubei. So Kyubei is basically tearing apart everything. He is terrible about everything. This scythe even alone, alone the scythe is getting rid of everything, even with Glaive, sorry, even with Bandit trying to stop it. And this looks to be the end of the game. Lori is closing in, getting all of his forces into position to deal with Cubase Commander, finishing off Cubase Commander, and will be soon finishing off everything else. There just isn't enough firepower to even deal with the size, let alone the Zeus or anything else that, that Lori is sending in to destroy Cubase. Now, Kyubei still kind of has the south side of the map, but the, brawl the Brawler is up! The Roach is trying to dodge it, but not quite able to do so. Barely damages the Metal Extractor, and the Brawler, not enough. 
Cube loses. Cube is out of the tournament. He just didn't. He just doesn't get it. Okay, actually, that's probably too obscure of a reference. Sorry, there isn't really enough common between Madoka and Zero K to, for me to make a lot of jokes about that. Anyway. Joke, attempts at joking aside. Kyube and Lori is complete. So that is all the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals have been completed. We are on to the, well, second semifinals. We did see God versus Klon already. Now it's Drone versus Lori. Drone and Lori will be... Our last semifinals, and after that, whoever wins fights God, whoever loses fights Klon. And that will be the tournament, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up shortly.